Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Pragmatic. This week's video, we're going through my updated 2023 Thames Vest. So dating back to some of the first videos I have ever done, I've got a ton of different videos going over my SWAT paramedic gear and each video it evolves. So since those first videos, I've changed agencies, I've changed state, and then I have also gained a lot more experience, taken more classes and learned more about how I should be loading out this vest. Every single mission I go on, I try to learn something from it or there's things that work and don't and I come back and I kind of uh, regroup and refit my gear to really optimize it in those environments. So nothing on here is to say that this is exactly how you need to set your SWAT medic vest up. This is not to say this is the best way in a year. I'm sure I'll have even more experience and this will be even more different than it is now. So keep that in mind as we're going through it. So getting into the video, uh, the vest itself, I've cheated a little bit. This is the uh, First Spear Siege R Optimized and I've ran, ran this vest for forever. I really like it. It's got really high end material, really sturdy, um, and it allows for a high level of customization. That being said, we are not issued this vest. Our team actually issues the ProTech uh, tactical vest, which is a very similar cut. Uh, still has the arm armor, same color and everything, but it's just heavier and it's an older vest. This is actually a sheriff's office hand-me-down to our Thames team. So this is what we're issued. Because of my platform on YouTube, I have access to some gear that not everybody has, so I was able to upgrade to the First Spear Siege R Optimize, and I absolutely love it. As far as armor, this has soft armor wrapping pretty much all the way around in the arms, and then it does have front and back rifle plates uh, for an additional amount of protection. So really safe vest. I believe the soft armor is actually coming up on expiration. I'm going to be changing that out. Uh, relatively soon. The hard armor plates are actually shot stop plates uh, that I've reviewed earlier on this channel. So great vest in that regard. Now, a couple things I can't change. Number one, uh, the color scheme. I don't have a choice. This is the uniform. Um, you know, I do have feelings about running around in multicam, especially when we're unarmed, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but this is our uniform. It splits the difference between two agencies that we uh, attach to. So we just change our under uniform to match whichever agency we're with, whether that's city or county. Uh, the second thing on here is you're going to notice that there are no uh, magazines. There's really no offensive weapons of any kind, and that's because we're unarmed. Once again, something I can't change. We're a hospital-based system, and uh, they do not allow us to become sworn on uh, the Thames team. That being said, we always have bodyguards with us. We train with the team. We do make entry with them. We won't always, if it's like, you know, a small trailer, really close quarters where we can get to the team members within a couple seconds. But if they're making uh, an entry into a building like an industrial complex, a school, we will be in the stack with them and we will make entry with them. We train with them very regularly. So once again, something I can't change. I get it. I have opinions. I'm sure you do too, uh, but that is what it is. And this uh, setup would definitely be different, you know, if I was carrying an ammunition loadout or, you know, smoke grenades, flashbangs, anything like that. But I don't have to, so I can dedicate it completely to medical. All right, so getting into what I'm carrying on here. Now, this is kind of the last thing I want to talk about. This is the medical placards. We're going to go around everything else, and then I'll take this off, uh, show you everything I carry from a medical standpoint. Uh, on the right shoulder, I have, I think this is like a Princeton Tac uh, light, and this has a bunch of different settings. It starts out in red, which I really like for nighttime operations. It doesn't bloom out stuff. If somebody's using NVGs, this isn't going to cause a bunch of problems. Uh, and it's just easy to kind of uh, read a map or look at some paperwork quick without really signaling your location. Now I can hold this down and it becomes a white light, I believe, white light, um, if we're not really in a situation where it matters, but it always comes on in the red configuration with I light, which I like. And I've put that just on the top shoulder. Now, light is super important. I've been in a ton of different situations where I have my helmet light or the light on my belt, but I forget something. I'm always running with the vest. I might not have the helmet for whatever. I've forgotten it before. I know it sucks, but uh, I might not have that. So it's always good to have some kind of light source, especially as a medic, because a lot of what you're doing, you're going to need to see to treat. And we are not running around with night vision goggles uh, all the time or treating anybody under night vision goggles. Um, so the light in the corner, I think, is super important. This vest has quick releases. So if I need to get out of this vest quick, I can just pull either of these and I can pull this guy here. It's going to release uh, everything and get me out of the vest. You know, heaven forbid, if I was the one to be shot, 
um, then they'd be able to treat me relatively fast. Now up here, I have a admin uh, placard and this is a huge um, addition for me and it's something that has made a large difference in my quality of life on the Thames team. So I keep this mostly empty. On the inside here, open this up, I actually have a number of things. So I have uh, some extra gloves just in there if I need to throw them on, but this is mainly for my phone. I can throw my cell phone up here and then I'm not digging in my pocket when my belt's covering it. It's just a pain. And then I have a bunch of drug admin stuff. So I just have syringes and uh, needles and some IV equipment. And that's mainly for our narcotic sedatives. You know, a lot of times we'll have patients that become very combative if they're really uh, high on drugs, they're a danger to themselves, danger to others, and we can sedate them safely uh, and get them into the hospital to get the care they need. So we have that stuff up here because it's quick to, to add to the kit. And then when we get a Thames call, I'll grab the Thames truck, we'll drive over, and that has controlled substances that obviously I can't uh, take home and wouldn't want to take home. That's a lot of responsibility. So I can take those controlled substances like uh, uh, fentanyl, midazolam, things like that, and throw them in here so that I have access to them on the mission and they're readily accessible. And then, of course, my phone goes in there, which we'll talk about here in a second. So that's everything that's in that bag. Oh, almost forgot. I've got some extra uh, AA batteries uh, in there just for my light on my head, actually. And then the one I carry on my belt both take that. And I have a handcuff key here. Now, you'll notice I have another handcuff key. And I think that's really important for a Thames medic to carry something to release handcuffs. Because if you're caring for somebody, they are restrained by law enforcement at that time. And... They go in response if you have to code them, um, you have to do CPR, position them differently. You can always get them out of those handcuffs quickly. Now, obviously, we're not just taking everybody out of handcuffs if they're dangerous. We're not going to fall for somebody pretending to be unresponsive, pull them out. But it's important to have that capability quickly so you can resuscitate and do appropriate care for those patients. So I keep two on me. This one's kind of wired in. It's kind of my secondary in case I lose this one. Over here, this is a combination handcuff key. It's also a uh, window punch. Now, some modern car windows will not allow you to do this. Uh, it, it won't work, but uh, for a majority of them, a quick punch will work well. You just put this up against the window, do that, it shatters. You can get somebody out pretty easily. So it's just kind of a, a entry tool if we need to get access to somebody in a car. And then next to that, I have a cheap pen. I've gone with really cheap pens because I lose them all the time. I hand these out and they're gone at a moment's notice. So have that there. Oftentimes have like uh, briefing sheets that are printed out. If there's a known suspect, they'll print that out, their dossier, they'll do the plan. We make a medical plan at the beginning of every mission so we know uh, hospitals, drivers, who's going where, what has to happen if an officer goes down or if a suspect goes down, what we're doing. So all of that paperwork will go in here or in one of my cargo pockets and then I have a pen to take notes on if I need to make notes for myself while we are in briefing or discussing certain things. For a uh, comm system, this is my push to talk system. And I really like this thing. This is the Centurion and I got it from uh, uh, Atlantic Tactical. Uh, I believe I'll put it up here. I kind of forget the name, but um, they make a great product. And this thing here is particularly nice because I can actually wire my Peltors directly into it with my helmet. Um, that's all my comms. But then I can also wire my cell phone into it. So if I get a call from another team member, uh, or have to coordinate something with the ER, we're going in and I'm calling a uh, patient report into them, I can just activate my phone and listen to it through my headset instead of taking things off and trying to get my phone up, even get my phone out. So this can wire directly to that volume knob on the side. I've had really good luck with this unit and it's been beaten up uh, like crazy and you can barely even tell uh, by the wear on the front of it. So really cool piece and that's just wired to the front of it. Um, I don't like the securing mechanism as much. I think that's the only thing I don't care for uh, with this thing. For the admin pocket, I believe this is Blue Force gear. There's a bunch of them on the market. This just seemed like the most minimalist, uh, easiest to access, and it doesn't stick out super far, which is important to me. All right, so uh, coming to the back of the carrier. Uh, back here, I have a pouch for a Mega Mover. This is just like a soft stretcher. Um, I actually used it, so I don't have it in here right now. I need to get a replacement for my department, but like everything, things are pretty backordered and this is no different. So I'm gonna get another one of these uh, to go on the back of the kit and that doesn't take up much space so it's still comfortable to sit in the Bearcat. Uh, a lot of SWAT medicine in particular is hurry up and wait. So we just kind of 
uh, sit around in big heavy gear for a long time uh, periodically. I've got a clip back here and this is just to control the wires to my uh, Peltor headset. I can just throw those back there and I actually have to have a friend clip it in, but then the wire is not dangling in front of me uh, getting caught on all of that stuff. Uh, either side, this is the mass system from First Spear, so you have to buy these shoulder pads and these guys and then the armor to go with them. Uh, the science for whether these really work is kind of up in the air. The thought is, is that this protects your thoracic cavity if somebody takes a side shot at you. Uh, there's some ballistic reports saying this doesn't work super well. For me, though, because we're not armed, I'm not shouldering a rifle in this kit. I don't really care. This doesn't hinder my mobility all that much. Uh, we're requ required to wear it as a team, so I do, and I really don't have a problem with it. Uh, I have National Registry on the other side of our department patch, which I've removed just for a little bit of uh, privacy here, uh, but not a whole lot to say about the arms. On the side, I've got these gloves, and usually I have my prep medic knife tucked into the side. I actually gave that away recently as a gift, so I need to uh, get with Dagger and not to get uh, another one. I kind of hand things out uh, left and right for some reason. All right, so the black gloves are good just to um, protect your hands. There's broken glass, things on the floor, uh, just to protect your hands going forward. Obviously, these aren't medical gloves. We'll still don the appropriate PPE to treat patients. So the last non-medical item we're talking about today is going to be the radio. So this is a Motorola radio. I don't really know uh, what model it is. It's what we're issued. It's what we use. Um, our Thames team has... Uh, specific channels. We have encrypted channels, so uh, not anybody can like monitor uh, what we're doing and kind of our movements. So these radios are kind of specially programmed for our team, but they're really the same type of radio that the entire department uh, is running. All our medics get issued one of these every morning when they come on. We just get to take them home because we're an on-call team. All right, so lastly, let's talk about what the medical items are on this kit. And I know that's probably what a lot of you guys we're waiting for. Now I've paired this back substantially. I do carry a backpack with me. I also have a belt with some stuff on it. So this all kind of goes into that and helps me uh, run efficiently. I've put this all on a placard system. So originally the CGR Optimized does not come uh, placard compatible, but I believe it's AXL. Yeah, AXL uh, makes adapters. So I've actually able was able to add uh, a placard to this vest so I can take this off really easily without having to redo Molly. So if I wanna run slick, I can to reduce weight, or more often than not, I'll take this and put it on my lightweight plate carrier if we're doing a hike through the woods, doing a manhunt, something like that. So this guy just comes off like that, and then it's left with this loop backing, and that's secured very well onto the vest. The only thing I'll say about it is that these aren't positioned high enough up. So when I put this on, it actually sits down. I have to kind of jam it up to get it all on the Velcro. I'm a little bit OCD about that, uh, so that's the only thing that bothers me about this setup. And like I said, this gives you a better viewpoint of our quick release handles. So here I can just get out of it just like that. Um, it's a really nice system and these things are super substantial. So get this off the table. Here we have the medical placard. Uh, and like I said, I paired this back a lot. I'm not carrying quite as much on me as I used to. Uh, this is just a Velcro backed thing and then there's Molly on the front. This guy is from HRT. Uh, tactical, so they make these just blank molly placards to essentially make it however you want. On uh, my right, I've got the uh, Crow Medical uh, Large Bleeder. Crow makes expensive stuff, but it's worth it. It's really nice uh, stuff. It's really substantial equipment. So this is their large bleeder pouch. And then next to this, this is a company called uh, J Tactical, and they make a bunch of really cool products. This is just a tourniquet pouch that can be mounted on a belt or um, mollied in. But then it also has a backing if I wanted to run this off the side of the placard where it'll mount here and then there's a little hard molly backing, I could put this onto it to not take up room on uh, this uh, placard itself. However, for me, I just keep it right there. It works just fine. So for a tourniquet, what we use uh, in our department is the cat tourniquet. Got that right here. Uh, folded. I find a lot of times I take these tourniquets and I'll hand mine out to officers whose tourniquets are looking uh, kind of ragged. Um, so I've actually just got one of those officers tourniquets here. I need to throw this into my training stock and grab a new one, but really try to keep them supplied with what they need because the medical gear isn't always the thing they're most focused on. Uh, in the side right down here, I've got an ARS needle. Now, 
Uh, decompressions without a stethoscope and other diagnostic criteria of vitals is relatively uncommon. I keep one on me, so I always know where it is, but I'll usually tie that in with some other hemodynamic symptoms that we're seeing. Most of the time, though, if I'm doing this, we're in a position where I can do a full uh, a diagnostic workup on the patient, a full assessment. All right, inside the pouch itself. What's really nice about these is you can customize these bungees however you want. So whatever you want to carry in the top lid of this kit, you can. Uh, in here, I've got two NPAs on this side. So these are nasal pharyngeal airways just to open somebody's airway up really quick until we can get a more definitive airway in place. So really handy to have in this kit. I've got uh, one, this guy here. Um, it, this is a Rescue Essentials emergency trauma bandage. So this is a compression bandage for either wrapping in wound pack after you've packed a junctional site, or uh, this can be used for like severe bleeding, but not something that needs a tourniquet necessarily. Somebody cut their leg, cut their arm, hand, something like that, but it's not requiring wound packing or a tourniquet, all use this. So that's right next to, us, next to it. And this is a pretty compact item. And then these guys here, I've got two things of combat gauze. So these are quick clot uh, pieces of gauze, kind of gold standard in bleeding control. And we are issued these guys. So these both have radio, uh, radio lucent lines, or sorry, radio opaque lines, so that the surgeon can see it when it's packed into a wound. These are not granules. I don't recommend anybody carry or use granules uh, because pressure is king. So this just has that clotting agent mixed in with it, and it really uh, helps stop that blood flow in a timely manner. So I don't have to hold this for like 10, 15 minutes. I can usually pack this in, hold it for a little bit, and wrap it quickly with one of these and move on from there. Uh, in the top of the kit, I have two sets of uh, hyphen chest seals. So these are the mini hyphen chest seals. I always forget what these are. Uh, compact hyphen chest seals. And there's one for an entrance and exit wound. I have two sets of those in here for chest wounds as well as your abdominal injuries uh, if we just want to cover something up and keep a bunch of dirt and grime out of it. And then last but not least, we have an H&H &H medical compression dressing. So these two are essentially the same thing. They're just folded differently. And this is just to wrap more wounds. I found that these guys are probably some of the biggest use items I use because a lot of times uh, these gunshot wounds or these extremity injuries are not arterial and don't need like really serious intervention, but they do need something to cover them up. So that's everything that I'm carrying in the front of the kit and pretty much everything that I have on my persons. So like I said at the start of this video, I change this up all the time. I change this up depending on the mission. So if we're going on something and we have like a pediatric consideration at the resident, I'll put residents, I'll put some uh, pediatric supplies in here just in case. I'll change out the tourniquets uh, depending on the team we're in and I'll always be trying to update the people I'm with with the current medical supplies so I'll oftentimes burn through my stock that way. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.